Hey guys, welcome back. It's that time of the month again where I get no sleep because I stay up all night making a video about the latest Inside Infinite. Yes, August's Inside Infinite just released and today we are recapping all of it. Most of it is feedback from the flight that we just had, uh, what's changing based on our feedback from the flight, what's coming next for Infinite in regards to flighting, and of course, it rounds out with some iconic words from our Lord and Saviour, Joe Staten. So let's waste no time because I'm already very tired and let's dive into this article. They start with a recap of the stats from the flight itself and they're pretty insane. So over the flight in general, 519,914 hours were spent playing in multiplayer. 65,342,411 bots were killed. There was a total of 1,346,687 games played. There was a total of 2,868,678 total weapon draws completed. And 44,953 hours were spent in those weapon drills, which is a lot of hours, I think it goes without saying. So, because I was up till like 4am last night working on my breakdown of the new Season 1 trailer, I am very tired, so I'm not going to cover every single detail in this article. I'm just going to cover all of the important stuff in here, all of the juicy details. So, let's jump into them. Starting off, they had a bit of mixed messaging about the Battle Pass. They said before that every tier in the Battle Pass had free stuff and also premium stuff, which isn't the case. The Battle Pass, uh, they seem to be overcomplicating it a little bit. The Battle Pass is just going to work like every single other Battle Pass in gaming in that you can pay for it and unlock something every tier, or you don't have to pay for it. And if you do that, then you only get free stuff every, I don't know, like five or 10 or 15 tiers or whatever. The only difference obviously with Infinites is that Battle passes don't expire, but besides that, this just works like any other battle pass in any other game. They've addressed an issue that many people, myself included, had in the flight where challengers just stopped updating or stopped refreshing or progressing, which meant that we couldn't level the battle pass up anymore. They fixed that. However, this is your boy coming in after recording the video. Uh, they've just confirmed that the only way to level up the battle pass is by completing challenges. You don't get any XP towards the battle pass from playing games. Why? I don't know. I don't understand it, but it is what it is. And they've also said, speaking of XP actually, um, they've said that during the flight XP rates were expedited, so they were a bit faster than usual. Uh, that's all great. One thing that I am a little bit concerned about, they've not at all mentioned a progression system besides the battle pass in this game. And I really hope that the battle pass isn't the only progression system in this game. I really hope we have like a military rank system as well as a battle pass. I think it would suck if we didn't. So moving on to the multiplayer and the design of the multiplayer, we got some information about how 343 designed Infinite's multiplayer, believe it or not. Starting off, Tom French gave us the three pillars for designing Infinite's multiplayer overall. The first pillar being the player Spartan is canon. So, 343 basically want us to feel invested in our Spartans as a part of the Halo universe, which leads to the world feeling more grounded without compromising gameplay. Now, as somebody who's never been a big fan of the whole multiplayer is canon thing, I will admit, Infinite's approach so far is a lot better than Halo 4 and Halo 5's, so I'm optimistic. The second pillar is extensibility at the core, which means modes, systems, and everything in Infinite Multiplayer is modular, which means that it can be expanded on over time with new additions and changes, obviously in keeping with the whole live service thing. And the third and final pillar is always onboarding, so they want to basically have the Academy act as an evergreen on-ramp of features to help new players get into Halo and learn Halo's like unique quirks and gameplay without going into matchmaking and getting bodied for not knowing them. And then Andrew Witts gave us the five pillars for designing Infinite's arena multiplayer in particular. Starting off, fair starts. I think that one kind of goes without saying. Second, the lone wolf survives, but the pack thrives, which means basically individual skill is great and can get you quite far, but ultimately teams that coordinate win more. The third pillar is mastery equals mechanical depth plus tactical decision making, which means matches with equally skilled players are determined by a player's decision making as the game state is altered. So basically as what happens in the game changes, the players that adapt to the situation is better will win. The fourth pillar is game mode clarity, which is simply modes communicating their ever altering states clearly to the players. 
And the fifth and final pillar for arena multiplayer is power is earned and impermanent. So encourage scavenging for power weapons, but ensure the player knows that having power weapons isn't permanent and that if you get outplayed by the enemy players, you can lose those power weapons regardless of how powerful they are. Moving on, they said that they were surprised at how fast we all found a load of the Halo references in the flight, but we didn't find them all. Apparently there are still some more Halo references in the flight content that we missed. I honestly can't think of what, because I'm pretty sure we picked that thing clean, but it's good to hear. <laughs> They said that the academy and playing against bots in game modes is just the beginning of what will be possible with bots. Now, I mean, I think we're all hoping for this at this point. I think we've all been hoping for this for a long time. But fingers crossed that means AI in Forge. The ability to create maps and have your, like, bots actually play on them in Forge would be nothing short of groundbreaking. If that were to be the case in Forge in this game, I think that would perfectly justify the delay. Um, so fingers crossed. They said that each game mode in Halo Infinite has a unique scoreboard, which is meant to help new players better understand what's going on in all the various different game modes, which is apparently a first for Halo. Is it? I, it might, maybe I'm misremembering. I feel like the scoreboards were like a little bit different. Like, for example, in Oddborn Halo 3, it didn't show your kills, it showed your ball time. Uh, or CTF, it showed how many flags you captured, or Slayer showed your kills. Um... Maybe they mean something different though. Maybe I'm kind of misunderstanding. In keeping with the whole thing about having your Spartan feel like part of the universe and have the game feel like a seamless experience and to have it feel more grounded without compromising gameplay, they said that when you spectate a teammate in a Warthog, there's this kind of Halo Reach effect where the camera is mounted on the vehicle itself, which sounds really cool. And they also said that they've made a conscious effort to have no kind of cutting of the camera. So when you start a game, you notice that the camera actually like pans into your Spartanus helmet, and also when you die, the camera pans out of your Spartanus helmet. It just helps to create a really fluid experience, and I, I really appreciate that. They said that the inspiration for the weapon racks came from the Halo 2 announcement trailer, and also Kyra Station, which is really cool. I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of everything just spawning in racks or on pads now. I think something can be said for the simplicity of having weapons just spawn kind of on the floor somewhere. I think as well, having that be there as well as racks and pads allows for a lot more unique weapon placement because when you think about it, if a we like the fact that weapons can only spawn on pads or on racks now really limits where you can put them. So like a commando can only spawn on a wall. It can't spawn like on the floor or leaning up against a wall somewhere. It has to spawn on a wall. So as, as cool as the idea for these racks are and as much as I like their presence sometimes, I feel like they aren't entirely necessary all the time. And then, apparently, the inspiration for the personal AIs in Halo Infinite came from wanting to recreate the kind of Chief and Cortana moments, where you're playing as a Spartan and you've got that AI in your head that you're communicating with and that's giving you battlefield information. They wanted to recreate that kind of moment with your multiplayer Spartan while also offering Halo 5's voice in your head call outs. You know, we had like, was it Spartan Miller? I think in Halo 5, he used to call out like, snap a rifle up or whatever. They wanted to kind of combine those Chief and Cortana moments with that voice to create a more Spartan-like experience. And I think it works really well. Um, I'm a big fan of those AIs, very big fan. So moving on, let's look at some of the feedback that we gave them about the flight that they're looking to address in the next flight or for the launch of the game. Starting with the radar or the combat sensor as they called it. So they said that the radar in the next preview is going to be far more in line with players' expectations compared to what was in the last flight. Now what I assume this means is that the radar is going to go back to being like how it was in every other Halo game where you appeared on the radar when you were doing everything including walking, unlike in Halo 5 and also in Halo Infinite where you don't show up on the radar unless you're sprinting, shooting, jumping or using equipment, I believe. The classic radar system was far better, and I think a lot of people picked up on that in the flight. Clearly, they did, because the feedback was there, so very happy to see them addressing that. All of the medal feedback has been heard, and the UI team are investigating addressing it, which is very good to hear. Uh, they also said that some medal animations weren't playing correctly in the preview, but my fingers are crossed that that means that the medals in this game could be kind of presented and styled more like Halo 3 and Halo Reach. I just feel like they're far more impactful. Those designs and the way they were presented on the screen in those games were far more impactful and they just felt far more present than they did in Halo Infinite. Having them really small and at the center of the screen in Halo Infinite just 
it felt kind of clunky to me. Apparently in the flight, Spartans were shouting over yonder too often, and they've changed that, but I wish they hadn't, honestly. That was quite funny. Hearing a Spartan, hearing a, a super soldier, a bio-augmented super soldier, 500 years in the future, shouting over yonder. There was, <laughs> there's just something special about that. I kind of wish they hadn't changed that, honestly. Keep it as is. You can now preview your AI's voice before you equip them, which is good. Uh, and they've also optimized some of the weapon drills, for example, the bulldog, so the Spartans don't run out of its range, which is good. Uh, and they've also added new bot behaviors in those weapon drills. And finally, they're going to be increasing the difficulty difference between ODST bots and the Spartan bots. Now, I'm not sure if you guys noticed this, but when they released the Spartan bots in the flight, they literally felt easier than ODSTs, so it's good to see them addressing this. They've also said that bots are no longer going to all run in the same direction at the start of the game and go after the same weapon like they did in the last flight. That led to some really funny moments, but I'm happy they're changing that. They're now going to spread out and prioritize different power weapons between each of them now, which is definitely far more organic human behavior than just all running to the same place after the same weapon every game in and out. As funny as that might be. <laughs> and finally, two small pieces of information before we get onto the magical Joe Staten section. Uh, apparently the Mangler is a three-shot kill, so do we have ourselves a brute Halo Combat Evolved Magnum on our hands? It's sounding like we might. And finally, uh, they said that bots may get new levels of difficulty over time based on player feedback, which would be kind of cool. I'd like to see mythic bots where they just tune everything up to 11 and just have them be insane. I think that could be quite fun for like challenges or something. But yeah, right. So now is the time to jump into Joe Staten's section, the bit that we've all been waiting for. Oh yeah, also Joe apparently wrote this on the flight back from Gamescom. So uh, he wrote this in the stratosphere, which is pretty much how he opens it. I'm currently streaking through the lower stratosphere on a late night flight back to Seattle from Los Angeles, having just finished representing the great work of the whole Halo Infinite team on the Gamescom opening night live broadcast. It feels terrific to finally reveal our launch date and we hope you enjoyed meeting Commander Agrina, who you'll be getting to know much better as we start unspooling the season to season story of Halo Infinite multiplayer. Good to know that there's going to be a story like that's told by the seasons. Very good. Before boarding my flight, I had a chance to read some of the commentary online, and I definitely hear the disappointment about not seeing campaign gameplay on the broadcast. So, I want to take this opportunity to, number one, shed light on why we chose not to show campaign right now, and two, to assuage your concerns about where campaign is at this point in the production process. As I mentioned in last week's development update, the whole Halo Infinite team is in shutdown mode. This means we're done with feature work and focused on crushing high priority bugs. We're spending lots of time playing the game, verifying fixes, and generally doing all we can to ensure campaign and multiplayer play great on all platforms, from an original 8 year old Xbox One to a brand new ultra spec PC. This is a very challenging task, even for a large and experienced team, I am not surprised. In many ways, shutting down a game is like being on final approach to landing an airplane, and if you'll forgive a bit of aviation geekery, the entirety of the team is essentially in a sterile cockpit, which is to say, we're at a critical phase in the flight that is Halo Infinite. So it's extremely important to avoid distractions and stay focused on mission critical tasks only. For campaign, that means putting maximum effort into ensuring the wide open, adventure filled experience you'll get to play on December 8th is as great as it can possibly be. And gameplay demos and trailers not only take a huge amount of effort to do, and to do well, they also take cycles away from bugs and other shutdown tasks. I would like to share, however, that right before I left for Los Angeles, I had to pause a full playthrough of campaign that I started late last week. I'm going for a 100% run, which means completing all primary and secondary missions, interesting, finding all collectibles, etc. I've played Infinite's campaign multiple times, but every time I do, I always find something new tucked away on Zeta Halo. Sometimes these are quiet little bits of environmental storytelling, such as an abandoned but desperately defended marine recon post, high on a lonely mountainside. Fortunately, the banished missed the fully loaded S7 sniper rifle that the marine is left behind. How convenient. Sometimes, these are combat encounters with deviously polished scripting. For example, a UNSC forward operating base that seemed abandoned, until I heard the laughter and taunts of multiple energy sword wielding and cloaked elites as I stumbled into their trap. Ho oh ho! Call me an optimist, call me a hopium filled addict, but silent shadow? 
please. <laughs> I'm going to keep begging for it. I hope all of you take comfort from the fact that, honestly, I can't wait to get back home, fire up the build, and hit continue on the campaign. No matter how many times I play, Halo Infinite remains fundamentally super fun to play, and we're very eager to share all the fun with you through captured gameplay, trailers, and other content once we get this plane safely on the ground. But for now, it's focus time in the cockpit as we stick the landing. Please keep those seatbelts fastened, and thank you for your patience and support. Joe Staten. Interesting. So uh, that was pretty much just kind of trying to settle our uh, worries about no campaign. I will say I'm still a bit disappointed we didn't, see, we didn't see any campaign. However, coming from Joe, who had to go and present Halo 2 at E3 in 2003, knowing full well that that presentation took away from time developing a game that was just didn't work, and then going back to Bungie with a year left to, de to develop the game and telling the entire studio, like, okay, right, we've got to start again. Coming from someone who's been through that, that, yeah, I understand that. I'm, I am still a bit disappointed we didn't see anything, but I do understand it, um, especially with the later dev. I, I feel like if they'd announced um, a release date in, like, early to mid-November, I would have been a lot more concerned, but, I mean, we are still three and a half minutes away, that's, that is a long time, but it, yeah, I, I, yeah, I understand that, um, just hoping that we do get to see some soon, because the last time we saw a campaign, besides the trailer a few minutes ago, uh, it didn't look too great, so, um, at least graphically, so, uh, I would love to see some more with the updated graphics, but I understand, uh, like I said, Joe, Joe, Joe worked in Halo 2, right, so he knows what he's talking about, right, I, I'm, yeah, looking forward to seeing it when it's ready to show off, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave this one here because, like I said at the start of the video, your boy is tired as fuck and I want to get this video done and up so I can go to bed. So thank you all very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I'll catch you all in the next one.